Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Press Enterprise High School Football Video Podcast. I am Press Enterprise Sports Editor Tim Hare and with me just like last week is Assistant Editor Dan Riley. You got it. Thank you for being here once again. No place I'd rather be Mr. Hare. Well it is also kind of your job. That is true. Yes. Uh, let's talk some football. Let's do it. Um, some interesting games last week and some interesting stories going into week three. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, like, like we did last week, we'll talk about the game that you covered and then I'll talk about uh, the one that I covered. You saw Danville for the first time. I did. Uh, thoughts on the Ironmen? The Ironmen, uh, they look strong. They, uh, I, I was a little surprised that their uh, defense hasn't come up with some, some huge plays, so I'm expecting to see some more out of that uh, defense. Is obviously, uh, uh, I'm talking more so in terms of interceptions. That's pretty much you know what they're known for. Uh, offense looked great, uh, especially the offensive linemen did a very effective job in blocking last week, and uh, they got a tough opponent in Montoursville coming to town uh, this Friday. Yeah, so. I, I was going to put you on the spot yeah. here, and uh, we were talking about it a little bit before we started recording. Yeah. Uh, who, who do you think wins that game? Who, If you have to bet your house. <laughs> if I'm betting the house, I, I'm going with Montoursville right now. Uh, I think the passing game is, is better off. Uh, and uh, just, just because Bryce and Mucine has got, you know, more years under under center than Peyton Riley does. And uh, if Montoursville can open up the pass game this week, it's going to be tough to stop. So uh, we'll see what happens. See, with games like this, and I do feel like it's a toss-up, mm-hmm. and uh, I feel like Danville has underperformed a little or maybe hasn't performed quite to what my expectations were. Uh, maybe my expectations were too high. But I feel like I still feel like they're capable of being the Heartland 2 champion. Absolutely, yeah. I, uh, I feel the same I, way. I feel like they're a potential district champion. Yeah. And even though Montoursville's coming off uh, the impressive win over Sealands Grove, mm-hmm. I feel like in a game like this, all things being equal, Yeah. I'm going to take the team with the lower risk offense. So many things. Bill Parcells famously said, you know, three things happen when you pass the ball and two of them are bad. Uh, I just feel like Danville can more consistently rely on running the ball 65 times, maybe gain 250. Yep. You know, ride Trent Hilkert and, uh, and Gannon Feldman and, and just, you know, pull out a close one. Yeah, they certainly They also do. have the kicking game, which, you know, when you can't punch it in, you know, uh, they can rely on Peyton Riley. He had the field goal against Bloom. Yep. He seems to be uh, a reliable weapon, you know, in that facet. So, you know, I, I can't say I'm super confident picking Danville. Sure. But when I have to do my predictions in the paper, the, the finger's going to be pointing to the, the Ironman's helmet. It certainly feels like a game that's going to be won on, on one big turnover, one big play, perhaps. It's two evenly matched teams. Um, it's, it's definitely our best game of the week. It's going to be fun to watch. I'm glad you, uh, you're you sending me over to, <laughs> to Ironman Stadium to watch it, well, for the, sure. The, the, in some weeks, you know, the, there are games where you're like, oh, this, this will be over at halftime. Sure. Uh, I'm not saying every game's going to be you yeah. know, overtime, you know, classic. Yep. But there are some intriguing matchups. Um, the team that I saw last week was Southern Columbia. Mm-hmm. And before I left the office, you know, I, I'd said to someone that I thought, I said, you know, Southern might be in a game. They were in a game with Shemokin. Yep. I feel like Bloom has some weapons on offense. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not saying Bloom's going to beat them because I didn't think they would. Right. Uh, but I was like, I, I think it's going to be competitive. And then Southern scores 35 points in the second quarter. Yep. Just totally stole Bloomsburg's lunch money and uh, did it all with Hunter Thomas on the bench. And I don't know if I've ever seen a Southern team do that. Score 35 and a quarter. I, I'd re- I, you know, I covered them from 02 to 2010. I, I saw five state championship teams. I'm not saying this team is better than those teams, because they're not. Sure, and they're very young, obviously. Right. But the fact that they had 400 yards at halftime, which a- another stat I can't remember them doing, the fact that they score 35 and a quarter, yeah. they do it without their all-state halfback. Yeah. And they do it with two freshmen, primarily... Uh, they scored five of the six uh, touchdowns in, in the when when Southern went on their run there. Right. You just kind of shake your head and you go, "How good are these guys going to be?" It's crazy that you say that because you know you're you had thought about the the matchup between Faust and Cam Young, I believe it was, yes. and, and how good that was going to be. Yes. Yeah, you know, Faust is supposed to be the star receiver of the game, but it turns yeah, out it's ju- well, two, two weeks in a row. I mean, two two things to point out there. Yeah. Uh, Julian Fleming really. Yep. Uh, just a breakout game for him. Just uh, he's a physical specimen. You know, he can run. He's got good size. Mm-hmm. I'm six four, and he's looking me in the eye. Um, and just a, a 
on some of those passes, Bloom had very good defense. On the yeah. touchdown catch, Jonathan Stone was step for step. And Julian Fleming, it's just, and Jim Roth made the point after the game, it's something you can't teach. You know, they call it ball skills, where you're going to go up, you're going to get the ball at the height of your jump. Yep. And then, <laughs> even then, Stone had good coverage. Right. And for Fleming to just rip kind it away, it it's mine, you know? And he, uh, you just kind of shake your head and you're like, this kid's going to be fun to watch for four years. I was going to say, you have four more years of looking forward. Uh, three more years, if had told technically four if we count this year. This year counts. Of, it uh, is a year. Is of looking forward to that. So that's going to be, like you said, fun to watch. And then on the other side, uh, and I, I think that, you know, uh, we, we talked about that Faust-Young matchup. Uh, Bloom's offense had some problems getting things going in the running game. They were uh, one-dimensional. Yeah. So, you know, you can't say, oh, Faust, you know, it's not always on the receiver. Sure, to, you know, he can't get the ball to himself, and there's you, a lot you, of moving parts in an offense. It has to be set up that way. But yes. the only catch he had uh, was in a, a second and long situation, second and 14, where he was getting a cushion. It was a seven-yard catch. Other than that, uh, you know, Cam Young had uh, a very nice interception where he just kind of willy mazed one, uh, you, you know, over, yep. over the shoulder uh, down the seam. Uh, a nice pass break up on and out. Um, just not a lot of room to work. And, you know, Cam Young, he, he's a kid, he's about 5'8", he's about 145 pounds. If he was one of these typical 6'1", 170s, yeah. he's going to Bucknell, <laughs> maybe a higher division. Sure. As it is, I think he could be a PSAC kid. Uh, just very skilled uh, just and, and very impressive. It's impressive that a, a kid his age, a freshman, is able to. Well, have, no, Cam Young's a senior. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. still thinking of Fleming, but e- either way, Cam, um, he is a player that that has been a staple there for you know four years, and it, it, the statistics support it. So, I mean, he's a obviously a very, very nice player. Now, the other storylines that come out of Week One, uh, I'm going to touch on three of them real quick. Yep. Uh, we'll just do some quick hitters here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Berwick, eight quarters, zero points allowed. They're allowing less than uh, 130 yards per game. Uh, is this a district championship team? I, I think absolutely. Um, can Wyoming area finally break that streak this week? No. Uh, well, do they score it, points? Scoring points? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Wyoming area is pretty good. They're, they're up they a little are, bit this year. They're, they're a good team this year. I'm going to give them the, the credit to say that they are going to score at least one touchdown. I would hope uh, so. You know, this isn't, you know... This is, uh, it's not Clayton Kershaw, shut out after shut out. No. Berwick's going to allow points. Right. Um, but not many. Through two weeks, though, I mean, to see Dallas and not, not give up points. Um, obviously, Hazleton's a much improved team over the Hazleton past Hazleton almost years. beat Valley West. Yeah. How, who, uh, who is and ranked, gets shut out by Berwick. Right. And, and Valley West is ranked fourth in the state in 5A. Right. So how good is that Berwick-Valley West matchup going to be? I'm also glad that you're sending me to that game, my friend. Are you really? Yes, I am. Yep. I'm the best boss hey, ever. How about that? Um, now, the other two storylines I wanted to touch on, uh, Central Columbia, mm-hmm. uh, 2-0, and not just 2-0, but they beat a Lewisburg team that has a reputation as one of the best in District 4. Very cool. they've got team. 15 sacks. Yeah, that's the, that's the eye-popping Because they're, they're, they're right not huge, but they just get after it, and from, from everything sacks. I've heard, uh, they just dial up blitzes. Uh, Lewisburg has some problems, protection. Sure. Because uh, they, they give up seven, I believe, to Hughesville. But Hughesville has one of the better front fours in District 4. Absolutely. For Central to go uh, into Christy Mathewson and, and do that, I think really says something about what they're building. Yeah, they are clearly a playoff contender, uh, a playoff team, a, a playoff contender. Um, I don't know if I'd say clearly. Uh, I, I think you still have to see after two weeks, you know, uh, they still have to play Loyal Sock, they mm-hmm. still have to play Hughesville. Now let's see what happens. But Loyal Sock lost to Mount Carmel and was in a game with Shimokin. You know, yeah. maybe Loyal Sock was estimated to be a little better than uh, they actually are. Yeah. You know, they, they, it sounds like they miss uh, Marty Clark a little bit. I'm sure they do, yeah. How about Warrior Run? 2-0 uh, for the first time since I was 7, and uh, they come into Bloomsburg this week. I was talking to DJ Flick, and uh, I was like, so uh, do, do you happen to know the last time you guys started a season 3-0? and He's like, nope. I was like, me neither, coach. I, I can't find it. I was hoping you knew. He, no one, if you know, email me, tim.hair at presenterprise.net, because no one can find the last time Warrior Run was 3 0. But it might, can't, it might be midnight uh, Friday. If you can't find it, I'm not going to be able to find it. Oh, no. Clearly. No. 
Now, I know where the bodies clearly. are buried at the PE. That's a clearly. Yeah, right. Uh, but Warrior Run. Wow, they've uh, talk about turning it around for them. Um, you know, they get a new coach now. They had some some nice players. You know, some experience coming back to the team. But it's like they made a a, a seamless transition here. Um, for them to be two and zero heading into Bloom with a very winnable game this week. Yeah, Bloom's reeling a little bit. A couple mm-hmm. changes on defense. They move Evan Bond to the defensive line and. Uh, they had a sophomore out there against Southern when the game was out of hand in the second half. Uh, right. Uh, uh, Scurry, Elijah Scurry. Okay. Who, now granted, it's JVs on JVs, but he was flying around there announcing his name a lot, and he earned himself a, a, a spotted inside linebacker this week. I think just to get some speed on the field. Sure. Which is, Bloom's uh, also another young team. Um, and uh, not a team with a lot of size. Sure. Yeah, and a lot of, you know, a lot of speed that has to make up for that size, so... Yeah, that's the game There's, I get, and yeah. I'm very interested to see what happens. I'd be interested to see that, too. Who, who do you think wins, Warrior Run or Bloom? I'm going to have to go Warrior Run at this point, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to pick against 2-0. Yeah. They're out gaining teams, I mean, um, mm-hmm. God, by almost 500 yards, so 250 yeah. a game. Ansel uh, Avich has almost already over 1,300 yards through yeah, the air. That's, he that's had two, about 230 last week. Pretty impressive. And, and it seems like they run the ball pretty well, and they yeah. stop the run. You know, or, those, I'm those sorry, are not, all... not 1,300. I, uh, that, that would, would be a lot through two weeks. Yeah, I was like, whoa, but still almost. If you can name the last time Warrior Run had a quarterback with 1,300 passing yards through two weeks. And when they went 3-0. and Please email tim.hare, <laughs> H-A-R-E, at pressenterprise.net. You can email me, too, to tell me I'm not that smart. Don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. There hasn't been a quarterback with 1,300 through two weeks. Uh, any last thoughts on either week two of the season or what we might see in week three? We had some great food last week to uh, yes. for our, our PE tailgate before and after games. Um, yeah. Keith Haup, photographer, brought... Uh, yeah. We went hardcore Polish. Yeah. We did some Holupki. We'll see what we got on the uh, the menu this week. Possibly porchetta. What, what are you making? Brownies. Actually, I'm not making them. My girlfriend, Marion, will be making those. But I could be purchasing some chips. Stay tuned. Riveting. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the podcast this week. But uh, if you like what you heard, or even if you didn't, why don't you check out the uh, Extra Points page on PressEnterpriseOnline.com. You can find all our stories, tweets from the games. We're going to start embedding these podcasts. uh, So hopefully you can see this one as well as past podcasts on the website. You can also check out our weekly playbook. This week we feature a story about Central Columbia football's revival under Scott Dennis. And, uh, hey, why don't you check out the uh, old school paper, newspaper, uh, go to the newsstand, plunk down a dollar. I think you'll get some change back. What are we charging for a paper these days? Do they still have newsstands? I'm so old. Uh, if, if there is a newsstand by you, uh, chances are you're living in 1996. But please check out the Press Enterprise. Follow us on Twitter. I am TimHair87. And you are? Dan underscore Riley 51. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week. For Dan Riley, I am sports editor Tim Hare, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody.